Aleph, Bet, Bet, Gimmel, Dalet, Hey, Vav, Sein, Chet, Tet, Yud, Kaf, Chaf, Lamed, Men, Nun, Samech, Ein, Pei, Fe, Tzadi, Kuf, Reish, Shun, Sen, Tav, Now I think I've said enough. Welcome to another lesson in our series from the Aleph Bet, a program for anyone of any age who wishes to learn to read and understand Hebrew, especially Hebrew that's part of the Jewish experience in America. I'm Mark Golub, and as always, it's my pleasure to be with you again. If you've been with us up till now, you know we've learned six Hebrew letters. We've learned the first two letters of the Hebrew alphabet, or Aleph Bet. The Aleph, which is one of two silent letters in the Hebrew alphabet. The Aleph makes no sound at all, just as the English letter B makes no sound in the English word lamb. And we've learned the Hebrew letter Bet, which makes the sound of the English letter B, or B. And we also learned that the first consonant sound in the name of each Hebrew letter tells us which sound that letter makes. So the bet makes the sound of the English letter B or B. And we also saw this animation of the letter bet forming from a bed with a ball inside it. Thank you, Alan. Actually, as you've learned, the dot inside a Hebrew letter is called a dagesh. And the dagesh can appear in almost any Hebrew letter. And in most cases, the dagesh does not change the sound that a letter makes. There are only three Hebrew letters which do change the way they're pronounced, depending on whether they do or do not have a dagesh in them. And one of these three letters is the bet. So in a subsequent lesson, I'll show you that the bet is pronounced as the English letter V, V, when the bet has no dagesh. But for now, we're only learning the bet with the dagesh, and the bet is pronounced B as the English letter B. In addition to learning the first two letters of the Hebrew alphabet, the Aleph and Bet, we've also learned the last two letters of the Hebrew alphabet, the Shin and the tough. The shin makes the sh sound in English, sh. And we have another animation of an old time ship turning into the shin. Here the ship with its three sails are turning into the shin with the dot over the right sail, so to speak. And the tough, which makes the sound of the English letter t, t. T. And since the tough is the only Hebrew letter with a big toe, we have an animation of the tough's big toe, you see that a good way of remembering the tough makes a T sound is the big toe. And if you see a shin with a dagesh in it, the dagesh does not change the sound of the shin. It's still pronounced Shh. And if you see a tough with a dagesh in it, in Sephardic Hebrew, the dialect of Hebrew spoken in Israel, and the dialect we're treating here on from the Aleph Bet, the dagesh does not change the sound of the tough either, so that a tough with or without a dagesh, both are pronounced like the English letter T, T. So those are our first four Hebrew letters, the Aleph, the Bet, the Shin, and the Tuf. And then we've also learned the Hebrew letter which makes the L sound in English, like the English letter L, U. It's called the Lamed, the Lamed. And we've also learned the Hebrew letter Mem, so feet or what we call in English the final mem, which obviously makes the M sound, mm. And this final mem will only appear at the end of a Hebrew word 
as in this syllable, lam, lam. This final mem will never appear at the beginning of a word or in the middle of a word. The final mem only appears at the end of a Hebrew word. And you know what, Alex? We'll just show everyone what a mem looks like if it comes at the beginning or in the middle of a word. There's your mem in general, which we'll learn more about in a subsequent lesson. Right now, we're only concerned with the way the mem looks when it comes at the end of a word. And again, it's called the mem sofit, or the final mem in English. So we've learned the following six Hebrew letters. The Aleph and the Bet, the Lamed and the final Mem, and the Shin and the Tuf. Aleph, Bet, Lamed, final Mem, Shin, Tuf. Your first six Hebrew letters. Now we've also learned four Hebrew vowels. Let me show you the vowels. The patach, the kamatz, the cholam malay, and the cholam chaser. The patach is pronounced ah, as the vowel in the English word father. Ah, as in father. And the patach is placed under a Hebrew letter. And since here the patach is placed under the silent aleph, the sound of this Hebrew syllable would simply be the sound which the vowel makes. In this case, it's simply ah, ah. The kamatz also makes the sound of the vowel ah in the word father. And therefore, this syllable is also pronounced ah. Silent aleph with a kamatz is simply pronounced Ah. And we've also learned the Hebrew vowel for O in English, as in the word Coke. And the vowel O in Hebrew is called the Cholom. And I explained last time that when Israelis pronounce the Cholom, it's really a shorter O than the English O. It's sort of pronounced O, oh, O. Oh. And when the Cholom is written over a vertical line, and actually you'll learn later that this vertical line is also a Hebrew letter, the Hebrew letter Vav, which we'll teach you later on. But when the Cholom is written over this vertical line, it's called Chalom Male, or a full or complete Cholom. But the Cholom O can also be written simply as a dot placed to the top left of a letter as you see here over the top left of the Aleph. And it's still pronounced the exact same way, O, or again an Israeli might say, O. Oh. But it's called a Cholom Chaser, which means a missing or lacking Cholom. Either way, this vowel is pronounced as the English vowel O or O, oh, if you're trying to speak more in an Israeli accent. And again, we have an animation for you. I teach young students that when you get hit on the top of the head, you say, oh. Or you can also remember that the Hebrew dot on top of a letter is like an English O that is simply filled in. Anyway, this dot, this cholom is pronounced as the English vowel O. So here now are your four vowels written all with the silent aleph. Can you read these Hebrew syllables? The first one is ah. The second syllable is ah again. Both the patach and the kamatz make the same vowel sound. The third is o. Oh, excellent. And the last one is also Oh, Mitsuyan, excellent. You've also learned that while Hebrew consonants are letters, Hebrew vowels are, as you can just see here, dots and dashes, which tend to be placed either under or over 
Hebrew letters or consonants to create Hebrew syllables. And do you remember the two rules of Hebrew which make pronouncing Hebrew words so easy? The first rule is, in Hebrew, every syllable has one vowel, only one vowel, and always one vowel. Let me say that again. In Hebrew, every syllable has one vowel, only one vowel, and always one vowel. There's always a one-to-one -one relationship between the number of vowels in a Hebrew word and the number of syllables in a Hebrew word. Count the vowels, the dots and the dashes, and you immediately know how many syllables are in that Hebrew word. So let's look at some examples. Look at this Hebrew syllable. How would you pronounce it? If you said sha, you are absolutely correct. The Hebrew consonant is the shin, and reading down, which is how Hebrew is read, the patach under the shin is added to the sh sound of the shin to create the entire syllable sha. Sha. Now, how about this syllable? Look at the Hebrew letter and then add the vowel to the sound of the letter, and you get Bo. Excellent. Mitsuyan. Bo. Now try reading this nonsense word. Read the first letter and vowel under it. Then reading right to left, which is the way Hebrew is read, pronounce the second letter and the vowel underneath it. How did you read the first syllable of this nonsense word? Sha is correct. And how did you read the second syllable of this nonsense word? La is correct. And now put these two syllables together, and how would you pronounce this two-syllable nonsense word? Shala is correct, with the accent on the last syllable of the word, which is how most Hebrew words are accented. Shala, mitsuyan. And finally, we've learned one more rule about reading Hebrew, actually the secret to being able to pronounce any Hebrew word you'll ever see, and that rule involves the only dots which are not counted as a Hebrew vowel. And these dots are called the Shiva. The secret to reading Hebrew is the Shiva. And the rule is the Shiva is never counted as a vowel. Again, the Shiva is never counted as a vowel. When a Shiva comes at the beginning of a syllable, it is not a vowel, even though the Shiva is pronounced I. The short I, as in the word fish, I. But when a shva comes at the end of a syllable, the shva is silent. And the purpose of the silent shva is to show us that the syllable is extended by one Hebrew letter, the letter over the silent shva. And again, a silent shva always ends a syllable or closes a syllable. And the secret to pronouncing Hebrew is to remember, a shva is never counted as a vowel. I can't say it often enough. A shva is never counted as a vowel. All the other dots and dashes in Hebrew are vowels. And by counting them, you'll always know how many syllables are in a Hebrew word. But a shva is never counted as a vowel. Alex is behind the camera. Tell me the rule, Alex, of the shva. The shva is never counted as a vowel. A shva is never counted as a vowel. Alex knows, now you know. A shva is never counted as a vowel. So let's take a look at the two-syllable word we just read a moment ago. How many vowels are in this nonsense word? Two is correct. How many syllables are in this nonsense word? 
Again, two is correct. There's always a one-to-one -one relationship between the number of vowels in a Hebrew word and the number of syllables in that Hebrew word. So again, how would you read this two-syllable nonsense word? Shala is correct, Mitsuyan. But now look at this word with a silent shva under the second letter. How many vowels are in this nonsense word now? And the answer is just one. There's a kamatz under the shin, but there's a silent shva under the lamed. And a shva is never counted as a vowel. And the silent shva simply extends the preceding syllable by one letter and then ends that syllable. So there's now only one vowel in this nonsense word and therefore there's only one syllable in this nonsense word. How would you read this one syllable nonsense word? Begin with the sound of the shin, add the sound of the kamats, then reading right to left Add the sound of the lamed. And if you said shal, shal, you are absolutely right. Mitsuyan, Mitsuyan. This nonsense word is pronounced shal. And if you can read this one syllable nonsense word, you have the main building block to be able to sound out and pronounce almost any Hebrew word you'll ever see. Try one more nonsense word, and we'll make it just a little harder for you. So first, take a look at this word and count the number of vowels in the word. Take your time. You should have counted two vowels in this word. The shin has a kamatz under it, so that kamatz is vowel number one. The lamet has a silent shva under it, and remember, a shva is never counted as a vowel. And the bet has a cholom after it. And the cholom is the second vowel of this nonsense word. By the way, we've also learned the rule that every Hebrew letter must either have a vowel or a shva. Every Hebrew letter must either have a vowel or a shva. It can never have both. It must have one, either a vowel or a shva. So what does the final mem in this nonsense word have under it? It looks like there's nothing there. But you may remember that the last letter of every Hebrew word without a vowel has a silent shva under it. But at the end of the word, the silent shva is simply understood. And therefore, in almost all cases, the silent shva is not actually written. So in this nonsense word, there are two vowels, the kamats under the shin and the cholom after the bet. And of course, if there are two vowels, there are also two syllables in this nonsense word. How would you pronounce the first syllable of this nonsense word? If you said shal, you are correct again. The silent shva under the lamed simply extends the first syllable by one letter, the lamed, over the silent shva. And how would you pronounce the second syllable? The second syllable. Look at the letter, vowel, and letter. If you said boom, boom, you are correct. We have a bet followed by the cholom o, followed by a final mem, and there's a silent shva under it, though it does not have to be written. And this creates the second syllable, bom, or again, some Israelis might call it bom. So now, how would you read this entire nonsense word? Shalbom is correct. Mitsuyan, Mitsuyan, Shalbom, with the accent on the last syllable. And again, if you can read this nonsense word, you are well on your way to being able to read and pronounce any Hebrew word you'll ever see. By the way, here 
are the three Hebrew words you already know how to read and understand. Take a look at them. And these words that you already know are Shabbat Shalom Abba. Shabbat Shalom Abba. And these words mean Sabbath peace, Father, or Sabbath peace, Daddy. Shabbat Shalom Abba. Shabbat is the Sabbath from the Hebrew root Shin Bet Tuf. Remember, all Hebrew words have three letter roots, and the three letter root Shin Bet Tuf has always something to do with resting. And so the Sabbath is the day of rest for all mankind, even for all the beasts of the world. And Shalom is peace from the Hebrew root Shin Lamed Mem. And that root means whole or complete. Shin Lamed Mem for the word Shalom. And then Abba is the Hebrew word for father or daddy. And some of you have asked, what about the word for mommy or mother? It's ima in Hebrew. Ima is the word for mother or mommy, for those anxious to be able to wish their mother's Shabbat Shalom. But you're now able to read this entire Hebrew phrase, Shabbat Shalom Abba, Sabbath peace, Father. So now, let's learn another Hebrew letter. The letters I have for you on this lesson are very easy to learn. The first letter is round in the upper corner, rounded in the upper corner, round. And this is the Hebrew letter resh, which makes the sound of the English letter R. R. By the way, Israelis will roll the resh, similar to the way French speakers roll a French R. And you can either roll the resh, or not. Many Americans do not roll the resh. So try reading this syllable. Ra. Good. Or ra, if you want to roll the R. How about this syllable? Ra again, very good. How about this syllable? Ro. Ro. Very good. And this syllable. Ro or ro. Again, Mitsuyan, Mitsuyan. Pretty easy, isn't it? By the way, here's a real word many of you know. Take a look at this real word. How would you pronounce this word? If you said bar, you're correct. Bar. And bar means son, as in the term bar mitzvah, a son of the commandments. And the term bar mitzvah applies to any Jewish boy 13 years old or older who from the day he turns 13 becomes responsible for his behavior to others and becomes responsible to the Jewish community as well. When a Jewish boy reaches his 13th birthday, he automatically becomes a bar mitzvah, a son of the commandments. And from that day forward, that boy is included in the quorum of at least 10 adult Jews who constitute the group of people needed to be able to perform certain Jewish commandments in public. This quorum of at least 10 is called a minion. And for example, if the Jewish community is about to read the Torah in public, a minion of 10 or more Jews above the age of 13 is needed. Or if one loses an immediate relative, like a mother or a father, a sister or brother, a husband or wife, or a child. One becomes a mourner in the Jewish tradition and recites a special prayer reaffirming life called the Kaddish. For a mourner to be able to recite the Kaddish, a minion must be present. And any Jewish boy 13 years old or older, 
is a bar mitzvah and therefore may be counted in that minion. It's similar to what happens to us here in America when someone turns 18. That person reaches majority at 18 and for example that person may then vote which is an expression of American responsibility. The only difference is that the Jewish tradition marks this change in personal status with a ceremony called of course a bar mitzvah ceremony when typically a boy is called to the Torah as a symbol of his becoming responsible for his own Jewish life. And one of the things you'll often hear people say or ask is, when were you bar mitzvahed? Or were you bar mitzvahed? As if bar mitzvah is something done to a person. The term is almost treated as a verb to be bar mitzvahed. I was bar mitzvahed, you were bar mitzvahed, he was bar mitzvahed. When actually bar mitzvah is not a verb at all, but it's a state of being. One becomes a bar mitzvah by becoming 13 years old. And so the proper question to ask someone is, did you have a bar mitzvah ceremony? Or where did you have your bar mitzvah ceremony? Not were you bar mitzvahed? Anyway, all this from a word you can now read, bar. And here's the word for a girl, which many of you also know, and which you can now read. Bat, which means daughter. And bat mitzvah means daughter of the commandments. And I want to show you one more Hebrew letter and another very important Hebrew word. This Hebrew letter is the only Hebrew letter with a hole in its side. See the hole in the side of the letter? This is the only Hebrew letter with a hole in its side. And you can probably guess the sound this Hebrew letter makes. It's the Hebrew letter H. And it makes a sound. And it's called the letter Hey. The letter Hey is the fifth letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And whenever I look at a hay, I think of a barn with a hayloft, which is another way you can remember the name of this letter and the sound it makes. This is the letter hay. And here's an animation of a barn with a hayloft turning into a hay. Here's the hayloft. Very good, Alan. And just like the English H, when the Hebrew hay has a vowel, it's pronounced like the English letter H. And just like the English H, when the hay comes at the end of a word, the hay is really silent. So try reading this syllable. Look at the letter and the vowel you've learned, the cholom. And this syllable is pronounced ho. Very good, correct, ho. How about this two-syllable nonsense word? Ho-ho is correct. Mitsuyan. Ho-ho. Or ho-ho. Now try reading this syllable. Ha is correct. Mitsuyan. And by the way, if you put this syllable, ha, in front of a noun as a prefix, it adds the word the to that noun. Ha is the definite article in Hebrew, and it's translated the. So, for example, you know this word, Shabbat, and now you also know this Hebrew word as well. How would you pronounce this three-syllable Hebrew word? Just add ha in front of Shabbat, and you'll have it. If you said... Hashabbat, Mitsuyan, Mitsuyan, Hashabbat. And what does Hashabbat mean? It means the Shabbat or the Sabbath. Hashabbat means the Shabbat because the syllable ha added to a noun adds the word the in front of that noun. And I keep repeating that's how easy Hebrew is. When you see a hey, 
in front of a noun, it's the definite article translated the. A hey at the beginning of a noun is the word the in English. And now, here's the new word of the day, the new word of this lesson. And after Shabbat, it's the most important word in the Jewish tradition. In fact, the word I'm about to show you, which you can now read, is the basis of Jewish life, and it's the greatest treasure the Jewish people possess. Here is the word, you read it. Some of you may recognize it right away. If you don't, just take your time, take a moment. How many vowels are in this word? Two is correct, the cholam after the tuf, and the kamatz under the resh. So if there are two vowels in this word, there are two syllables in this word. How would you pronounce the first syllable of this word? To is correct, to. And the second syllable, and remember at the end of a word, the hey tends to be silent. If you said ra, you are correct. Ra or ra. So put the word together. Torah or Torah is correct. Mitsuyan, Mitsuyan. This is the Hebrew word Torah. Literally, the Torah means teaching or law. But what is the Torah? The Torah is, first of all, the five books of Moses, the most important set of books in the Jewish tradition. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, the first five books of the Jewish Bible. And the Torah, which is written meticulously by hand on parchment and wrapped around two wooden rollers, the Torah is kept in a beautiful holy ark, as you see here, often with other Torah scrolls, or Torot, the plural of Torah, as you see here. And the Torah is read in the synagogue every Monday, Thursday, and Shabbat, on Saturday mornings and again on Saturday afternoons. And the Torah not only contains all the great stories of mankind's birth and growth, the creation of the world and of humanity, the story of Cain and Abel, and the story of Noah. The Torah also describes how the Jewish people were born, beginning with the great patriarchs and matriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah, and then describes how Jacob's name was changed to Israel and how his children became known as the children of Israel and how the children of Israel became slaves to Pharaoh in Egypt and how Moses led the Israelites out of Egyptian bondage to a modest hill called Mount Sinai where the children of Israel stood as one at the foot of the mountain to receive the Torah with the words, We will do and we will understand na'aseh v'nishma. And the Torah goes on to describe the wanderings of the children of Israel in the wilderness for an entire generation, virtually 40 years, until they stood in the plains of Moab overlooking the Jordan River and their homeland of Canaan. And there Moses speaks to them for the last time and then passes away without ever reaching the promised land himself. And in addition to these marvelous, marvelous stories, the Torah contains the laws which serve as the foundation of Jewish life throughout the centuries. The Torah is like the constitution of the Jewish people, containing all the values and goals and ideals of the Jewish people. Values and goals which have been passed from parent to child, and then child again, from Sinai to this very day. The Torah is the constitution of the Jewish people in that it provides the foundation and basis of Jewish life. It contains the Ten Commandments and it contains the Shema, the most important single line of Jewish identity. Hear, O Israel, Adonai is our God and Adonai is one. There is nothing more beloved to the Jewish people than the Torah, nothing. When it's marched around the synagogue, people reach out with their 
prayer book or their talit, their prayer shawl, to touch it and kiss it. The Torah is the soul of the Jewish people. It's the love of the Jewish people. And the wondrous thing about the Torah is that it's constantly being read and interpreted by great rabbinic sages throughout our history and to this very day. Minds of genius and extraordinary intellect and exquisite human compassion who've explained that more important than what the Torah says is what the rabbis teach the Torah means. And whether one believes the Torah is the actual word of God, or whether one believes the Torah is a divinely inspired work of the Jewish people, whether one is a very observant Jew or a holy secular Jew, all understand and agree that it's the Torah which stands at the center of Jewish life. It's the Torah that has shaped the Jewish people, their destiny and their character. And it's the Torah that has given the Jewish people its unique identity among the family of nations and peoples. And now you're able to read this word in Hebrew yourself. Torah. Torah. And you can even read and understand this word. Ha-Torah. The Torah. Ha-Torah. The Torah. As always, it's been such a joy for me to spend this time with you. I hope you find it educational and enjoyable and that you're learning not only how to read Hebrew, but how Hebrew can open windows into a greater understanding of Jewish life. I hope you enjoyed that lesson of From the Aleph Bet. And remember, you can download lesson sheets and worksheets for every lesson of this series free of charge. Just visit the JBS website homepage at jbstv.org and click on the program icon for From the Aleph Bet. And then click on the very first option, From the Aleph Bet Hebrew Study Sheets. And for anyone who can send JBS a tax-deductible donation of $180 or more, we'll be pleased to send you the entire 20 program series one of From the Aleph Bet on DVD, complete with a CD of lesson sheets and worksheets. JBS, expanding Jewish understanding, celebrating all things Jewish. Be well, my friends. Aleph, bet, bet, kimmel, dalit, hey, love, sein,